Amen. Let's rise up upon our feet. I want you to be happy before God that He brought you to cleanse you so that you can be used by Him in this end time. Your tongue will preach the gospel. As a result, he wants to cleanse the tongue. And remember, your tongue is, in, is connected to your heart. And the heart is the center of your being. When he has cleansed you, you will go for him. Commit yourself to him. Jesus' name we pray. A God, we are before you. We are before your world. I'm asking. The Bible says there are three that bear witness on earth. The spirit, the world, and the blood. These three walk as one. I am asking that the Holy Spirit will follow your word and God, the blood of Jesus will be used by the Holy Spirit to cleanse these people. In Jesus' name, may the conviction of the Holy Spirit rest upon them. There are those who are dead in their lives. They don't bother. Whatever you say doesn't touch them. Oh Lord divine, I'm praying. Arrest such ones. It's not your word like a fire that burns. Is it not like a hammer that breaks to pieces? May your word burn through those people. May your word break their hearts in Jesus' name. Lord, you wound and you heal the wound. I am asking, as you bruise them, bruise their hearts, bruise their tongue, you will cleanse and heal them in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayer. Jesus' name we pray. Misuse of the tongue due to sinful heart. We introduced to you yesterday the whole message in the conference by the topic the connection and fruits of the heart and tongue. And now we are entering into the message. Misuse of the tongue due to sinful heart. In the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah we want to read chapter 17, verse 9 and 10. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 and 10.
The Bible says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can see the strict condition of the heart. It is deceitful. You have a heart. Your heart can deceive you. Your heart can tell you all is well when actually all is not well. Your heart can be excusing you, saying, I'm not involved. Ah, before I came here, I already examined myself. I've already settled myself. So nothing is happening to me. I'm not part of what they're saying. It's a, deceit. It's, it's a deceit. That's what the heart can do. As a result, instead of paying attention, and speaking like the psalmist, examine me, O Lord, and know my ways. And see if there be any wicked thing in me. You will not say so. You say, I've settled. God, you know I've settled with you. So I don't have any problem. Deception of the heart. Instead of saying, that which I know not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do it no more. No, your heart deceives you and say, which iniquity? Deception of the heart. Many go to hell and wonder why they are there. Because the heart deceived them. You think that the people who are in these other churches, where the sound truth of God is not there. You think they know that they are, they are sinners? Do you think that their pastors themselves know that they are not on the way? Many of them, even in sin in their lives, their hearts have been put in a condition that says they are, they are fit for heaven. That's why when you're talking about knowing Jesus, which Jesus, I know him. I love him. He died for me, yes. I'm a Christian. But you look at the person talking, saying that he's a Christian, you look at him up and down. He's not, he's not near the kingdom of God. But the heart has deceived him. The heart has deceived him. I'm saying so you can't be here with a deceived heart. Instead of allowing God to search you, instead of accepting your sins, accepting the revelations of God about you, you will say, no, I'm not the one. And you go here empty. And the time of your cleansing passes away. When will you find the time again? When will God organize a conference like this for you again? That your heart is deceiving you and you are agreeing. You must plead against deception. And this deception shall increase in the, in the later times. Take heed that ye be not deceived. Take heed. Be careful that this heart does not deceive you. The heart is the, is, 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 is the container that receives information. Be careful that nobody gives you a deceptive information that you are here, you are sitting with deception. Your heart has been deceived. Be careful that no man deceive you. Now, the heart is deceitful above all things 
all things. It is the number one seat of deception. Your eyes can deceive you. But because you see somebody, you thought it was this. No, it's not that person. Uh, you know it. You, are, you agree to that. You look at something. You think you're seeing this. But you came to discover it's not like that. Oh, so my eyes were deceiving me. The heart is above the eyes in deception. The eyes. The deception of your eyes does not equal to the deception of your heart. Now you're here. Your heart might still be saying, this is not the place. Your heart is telling you, this is not the place. Which Christianity am I seeing here? Deception of your heart. I'm telling you, it's a, it's decept- it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a place, a container that receives deception. Be careful. Otherwise, where are you going to go again? All this while, the Lord brought you here. But the heart is trying to reject it. That is not here. This is not the place. Yes, deception. Now, again it goes. The heart is, dis- is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. The wickedness of the heart is in a great percentage. Desperately. Desperate comes from the word despair. Despair comes from the word discourage. So, it is wicked to the point of discouragement. I'm telling you, your heart is wicked to the point that you are discouraged. What can I do? I can't do anything. I can't do anything. I've been like this. I want to change, but I've not been able to change. So what will I do? You are at a point of despair. And that's actually the state of your heart. You don't know what to do again. How many conferences have you been coming to? How many preachings have you had? You are in a place, at a point, you say, woe is me. This hellfire is meant for me. I can do nothing about it. But then the Lord says, see it. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Not even you. No human being. Even these people that can induce information from you can really not know the full state of the heart. Who can know it? Who, who would have told you that you can do that thing? Who would have told you that that circumstance will just weaken you? Who would have told you that that man's voice will take away all energy from your life. You, after you have said, I can't do this again, who would have told you that this man would just come before you and all your strength is gone? You follow him like a sheep going for the slaughter to go and commit sin. It's after it, you say, is it me? After all these years, after all this commitment, is it me? That's the state of your heart. That's why God says, give me your heart. I will work on it. That's why God came himself to handle the case of your heart. That's why, please give it to him and surrender. Because you you don't know the depths of that heart. You don't know what Satan built into that heart. That, and God says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. 
I know your heart more than you do. There are things you pretend, but I know the real thing, real situation. There are things you do and forget, I don't forget. I know the corner, it is kept hidden in your heart. There are things you do and you don't understand, but I understand. I understand. So, my dear sister, bring your heart. My daughter, give me your heart. That's the request of God unto you. It's desperately wicked. Only God knows what is the content of the heart of a man and of a woman. Also, because of the connection of the tongue to the heart of man, the tongue can reveal the state of the heart of a person in ways and expression that can be understood. But even that, is it everything the tongue says that the heart actually has its soul. The heart can tell the tongue to say something that is not its own condition. The tongue can be saying a thing that is not the real state of the heart. The Bible calls those people double-hearted, double-minded people. The heart has two compartments. The thing that the tongue is saying <laughs> Do I even say that the heart deceives the tongue? Because of its state, the tongue is saying what the heart is not really saying. Because it is a wicked place. However, the tongue, since it's connected to the heart, reveals the state of the heart in a greater percentage. Yes. That is what we need to understand. The heart is the seat of sin. All manner of sins start from the heart. Look at it in the book of Mark. Chapter 7. Verse 20 to 23. Mark chapter 7. Verse 20. To 23. And he said, That which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For from within, out of the heart of man, of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness. Wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil are. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. The speaking sins originate from the heart and defile the man. We are saying this. We want a holy church. We want holy church. But this defilement is working great to hinder your being a member, a true participant in a holy church. This tongue that defiles you does not allow you to be a mother in the holy church. It does not allow you to be a real sister. It does not allow the men to be real brothers and fathers because of defilement. And God wants to handle it. And it is my prayer he will succeed in your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. What are the sins of the tongue? 
Matthew chapter 34, chapter 12, verse 34. What are the sins of the tongue? Matthew 12, 34. O generation of vipers, <clears throat> how can ye, being evil, speak good things? Do you know why I laugh? When the word say all generation of vipers, I say, hey, if all these women gathered here are vipers in Horemo, trouble is, we are in trouble. How then do we move? You bite one another. You cut one another. You wound one another. You offend one another. You blaspheme God. You curse God. Hey. But Jesus called a people like that. More than you in number. A generation. A generation. Great number of people. He said they are, they are vipers. How can you? Being evil. The heart is evil. Speak good things. Your heart, the state of your heart cannot speak good things. What does your heart speak? make your tongue speak? Lies. Lies. In Proverbs, chapter 6, lies. Can you see? That is what your heart can make your heart, your mouth to speak. Verse 16 to verse 19. It goes 16 to 19. Proverbs chapter 6. These six things that the Lord hate. Yet seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue. Can you see what a heart can? I'm talking about the sins of speaking. A proud look is the sin of appearance. You just look, you are greater than these people. I'm superior, no more than you. But I'm talking about the lie, the sin of the tongue, the speaking sin. Lying tongue. You don't know when you have lied. Actually, you yourself have been protecting yourself. You know, when you want to release gas from your body, it's trouble. You want to control it. You want to control it. Boom! You say, hey. That is how your own lie is. How you want to control your tongue before you do it, la has come out. That's the state of your heart. Lying tongue. Your tongue is there for lying. Your tongue is there for lying. Ye are of your father the devil. The deeds of your father ye will do. For he was a murderer from the beginning and abides not in the truth. He is a liar and the father of it. If now you are a liar, who is your father? Who is your father? But you are in the church. Does Satan father somebody inside the church? That is it. That is the spirit of Satan. The Lord wants you to cut off from Satan today. Cut off from Satan. But God has to help you. Seek the help of God to cut off from Satan today. Your tongue shall not lie. I am purposed that my lips shall not transgress. Make up your mind so. Lying tongue. Let's continue. 
Yes. Verse 17. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a, and heart that devised wicked imagination. Can you see? This heart sits down and imagines what to do and what to say. The thing for action, it can transfer to the hands and to the feet or to the eyes. But the thing for weight, it transfers to the tongue. Sits down and imagine evil. All these armed robbers, robbers that are going about, they have their masters that sit at home and teach them how to do it. They do and come and give him account. They bring those things stolen to him. He's the one that shares to them. He sits down and imagines the next place. He sits down and imagines how to settle their case with police. He sits down. So your heart sits down to imagine the next thing to say to that person. The next thing to say to that person. The next thing to say in defense of yourself. You said this. Which one do I say again? You said this. Which one do I say again? You said And you have been living in a lie. It goes. And heart that devises wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift in running to mischief. A false witness. That speaketh lies. And he sowed discord among brethren. Is the work of the tongue. A false witness. You were not there, but you say I was there. To, because either they paid you, or you want to justify somebody that is in your group. Or you want to show somebody, I am for you. I will protect you. And so, you gave a false witness to justify that person, to set that person free. And look at this one. He goes about to sow discords among brethren. She would tell Sister A this and go to Sister B and say, Do you know really what Sister A is planning for you? And that gives them joy to go about sowing discord and see how they affect the church by hitting sisters together hitting leadership and members together that's their job it is a sin so it's sweet to them it makes life fine it gives her favor from sister a and sister b because they will all be looking at her as a good person but that is for a moment. A lying tongue is for a moment. When you are discovered, you lose forever. But this is it. Lying tongue. Again, backbiting tongue. It's still in the same category. It is at the bar. You can't see it in the presence of that person. You can't say it. That is why we are always saying, don't condemn a person until you have occasion to hear the other side of the matter. Because of these people, they will come and tell you something, tell you their lies. To, po to put poison into your heart against your sister, against your brother, against the leadership of the church. And you have not verified. Many of you are seated here in this sin. The sin of the Pharisees that want to kill Jesus. Go and bring him. What has he done? Nicodemus asked them, how can your, does your law condemn a person unless it has hurt him? Does your law condemn a person without hearing his side? But you have condemned many people. You never heard them. If somebody 
a gossiper, a backbiter that came at the back of that person and told you stories and you believed that person without hearing the other side. And now, see the way your heart is towards that person. You are not talking together. You are not greeting me as a hypocrite. I don't want, I don't want hypocrites on my way. You don't even want to sit where she's sitting. The Lord will judge you. Did you ask to know the detail? Doesn't my word say you should hear from the other side? Why didn't you hear from the other side? Why are you condemning my servant? Why are you condemning he that is righteous? More righteous than you. Again, it is not according to the law of the Romans. Even the hidden nation know about this moral, about this truth. To have a person condemned until he has occasion to speak face to face with his adversary. You can't just come up and say, hey, this woman is a witch. And we shall be hearing you. No. No, you must come before that person and say why you say so. Do you have the courage to say it? If you don't have the courage, hold your peace. Because we cannot condemn a person without having him and those who accuse him to speak face to face. Yeah. Don't we know there are weaklings who may not be able to speak face to face. If you hear, we keep it somewhere else. Until they have, we have enough information. And those people must speak face to face. Face to face. Face to face. Otherwise, this backbiter will destroy the assembly of God. They will destroy the righteousness of God. They will destroy the peace of Christ in his church. Deceitful tongue. What can be given to you? In Psalm 120, deceitful tongue. Psalm 120, Yes. What shall be given unto thee, O what? O what shall be done unto thee? Thou false tongue. It's false here. False. Deceitful. It's false. What he is telling you is not the truth. It's false, actually. It's not, he's even giving you half truth. No, completely, it's not the truth. There are people like that. It's sin. In this world, people eat various kinds of meat. There are people that eat cow. That's beef. Some eat pork. That's pig meat. Some eat chicken. Goat. There are those that eat dog. And there are those that eat lizards. There are those that eat rat. There are those that eat cockroach. You say, you find him eating cockroach very happily. You say, eh? Come, what? Tell, don't tell me that. So there are different kinds of sins people take pleasure in committing. Your own is this. Her own is this. His own is this. Their own is this. Various kinds of sins. So there are people with false tongue. Among these people you find false preachers and false prophetess. You go about them. Go around them. And they prophesy false things for you. They tell you things that are not. 
and to make their business serious, they consult demons. They use powers that make you believe. They get some things into their mouth, into their tongue. They formulate the, the place where you go to meet them and build in some strange spirits into such environment, spirits of deception, so that when you come in there, whatever they tell you, you will believe. But it's false. That's what the tongue can do. It's false. Somebody wants to marry a woman and then you send an information to that person because you don't want him to marry her and begin to say false things about the sister. False things. And if the person is not mature to take it to God in prayer, to inquire further, the Bible says in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. If he cannot go further, he takes from you and that's how it ends. The good thing he would do, he won't do it again because of false information. Yes. Deceiving people into wrong actions. Deceiving people into wrong beliefs. We have churches that have deceived people. They have deceived people into everything. And the people are there, ready to be deceived. But the Lord wants you. Be careful that ye be not deceived. Let no man deceive you. Ye shall know the truth if you continue in my word. And the truth shall make you free. You won't be deceived any longer. You will not. All these people that say bring money, we will do like that for you. We will go and fast for you. Having come to this place, you know that those are not people of God. You're, the truth has set you free. Sins of the tongue. Poisonous tongue. Sharp arrows of the mighty. Sharp as spear. That's how the weights are. You look for weights that will cause your mother to regret that she gave birth to you. You look for weights that will cause your husband to feel terrible. Feel that you are nobody. What you look for weights? What weights? The man that is to marry me is still looking for me. I made a mistake to come to you. It's enough to keep that man in trouble all, all his life with you. Now that you say the man is still looking for you, what do you people do together? What do you now do together? When do you meet with yourself? Since he is not fit for you, a better man is there and that man is still interested in you. When will that relationship stop with that man? You are an adulterous woman. I can't have confidence in you. You use your tongue to destroy your marriage. Sharp words. Hard words. That cannot, the person cannot be delivered. Oh, the way you talk to your child. As you are, nothing in this life that you will do will prosper. The boy is frustrated. I would have written this exam, but my mother said, I won't prosper in it. You think it's a casual world. Words live forever. Until the judgment day. Every idle word that you speak that brings confusion to a man. Confusion to a church. Confusion to a society. Confusion to your family. Confusion to your children. You will be judged on the end time. At the end time. Because you distorted their life. By deceitful words. Words that have no meaning. But they have carried it. The words you spoke against the church. False words. That is the one they are using now. 
What about those people who said the disciples of Jesus came and carried him in the night? And the Bible is saying that this is what is being said up to this day. To deny crucifixion and death. To deny resurrection of Jesus. Up to this day, what about the person that originated those words? Judgment is waiting for her. Judgment is waiting for him. He has distorted the course of God. He has bent the truth of Christ to the fall of humanity. Yes. Evil tongue. An angry or raging tongue. You are angry is words you will speak. You didn't hear? Be ye angry but sin not. Neither give the devil a place. But you, raging words. Always quarrelsome. Always quarrelsome. That's why your husband cannot stay with you in the house. Because quarreling. This one is not there. This one is not there. He has done this. Other men are better than him. This, this one like this. This one like this. The man has to be coming in the night. When you are sleeping. Because of your tongue. The sins of the tongue. The sins of the tongue. Troubling the society. Angry. You speak words and not bother what you are saying. Destroying your Christianity. Destroying your leadership. Because people don't believe you are born again. Not even to talk about being a woman leader. Being a, a pastor, a leader in the church. No, you're not born again. By the words you speak when you are angry, by your facial appearance when you are angry, by the foaming thing that comes out of your mouth. They say, No, we know the level. A child of God can be angry, but not this type. This has crossed the bar. The sins of the tongue. The sins of the tongue. The sins of the tongue. Perverse tongue. is like soup spoiled by kerosene. Soup spoiled by some other thing. You can't eat it anymore. Some smells have come out of it. It has been contaminated. That's how your tongue is. Contaminated. Contaminated. Something that the lawyer's profession is to speak lies. No. Is to speak truth. Law comes from the word of God. It is the mind of God that there should be magistrates to defend the truth and not lies. Not lies. It's sinful lawyers that tell lies. Christian lawyers Born again lawyers, holy lawyers, tell the truth. And the truth will normally overcome lies. It is the truth that brings mercy. If you want God to come into the, the issue and arrest it and overcome it and show mercy to the sinner and justify the, 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 the righteous, speak the truth. The truth is the spirit. It will walk on those who hear it. If you have seen, say so. The spirit of truth will convince the people of your lie. That you are sincere. That if you were not sincere, how could you have spoken this truth? Yes. Yeah. Flattery tongue. Flattery tongue. Job said, I am determined that my tongue shall not give flattery titles to people. Flattery. A person has done wrong. Why not pray to correct him or correct her? You come and say, nobody is like you. You are just the best person in the world. In fact, you are the right person. It's flattering. When you go to other people, you say, when I went to tell him, 
or tell her that she's the best person. I saw her, she was bending her head and said, yeah, yeah. You see, you have a flattery tongue. How can you correct somebody? How can you perfect somebody? How can you raise up somebody for Jesus? How will you correct Peter so that righteousness should return to the church if you are the one with flattery tongue? So, but I say the heart is the center that bubbles up these lies to the tongue. The heart. Let me say comment on this. Wives, do you know your husband is discouraged at knowing at you because you don't tell the truth? He's discouraged. Yes, prices of things have risen in the market. But your own price is above the market itself. The one you give, the one you say you have bought, is above actual market situation. Your husband got so shocked that he went to the market to go and check and got the truth. But what will he tell you now? Just to prove which woman do I have. Now, to know you are a liar, how will life be? Which perfect love are you expecting? How do you drink the water that you have stirred up? It's no more lying clean. You have stirred the dirt up and it is now muddy. How do you drink it? So that's what God says. Bring them to me. I want to change them. I want to give them a new life. I want to prepare them for end time. I want women to go to heaven too. And I want her to be among them. That's why you're here. It take, what actually informs a corrupt tongue? I said a corrupt heart. Look at it in Genesis. Sinful heart that produces sinful tongue. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and verse 6. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him at his heart. Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The heart is evil. That is why your tongue is evil. Your heart is evil. That is why your tongue is evil. And that, that God repents of giving you a place in his church. God is sorry that he gave you as a wife to that man. How will there be no peace in the house? Will, how? And why? And it's because of you? Because of an evil heart. The tongue cannot speak well. You abuse without bothering. Abuse your husband. Abuse to his parents. To his mother. You don't bother. Is the type of heart God regrets for creating these people. God regrets for creating these kinds of people. But his mercy has planned their salvation. You will be saved. I said God will save you. Evil heart. Wicked heart. 
in Deuteronomy 15 verse 9, wicked. Wicked heart. Deuteronomy 15 verse 9. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart. This heart can shut up itself from doing good to somebody. Whatever is the condition of that man, I won't do it. I won't give that money. I won't give him the food. I won't visit him. Wicked heart that doesn't know how to do good, doesn't take pleasure in good but in evil, wicked heart, that is seeking how to do somebody evil. Somebody was telling me of a kind of people, either in Madagascar, that if you offend them, they will not talk. What you did, the evil thing you did against them, you keep quiet and start planning for when to revenge. It can take them more than one year to be planning, planning, gathering themselves, preparing themselves to revenge. It's when they are prepared, it's just to come to you and say, hey, 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 come here. That thing you did, you think I have forgotten. It was that I was not ready. I'm ready now. I did only in Madagascar. I did not hear. I, don't we have this kind of people here? That offense done at you can never be forgotten. Can never be forgiven. It's only you're not prepared. Only you're not in the position now. Only now I am not ready. You can't settle with that person. Are they only in Madagascar? Are they not in this conference too? That offense. Have you forgiven it? When you met the sister here, did you greet him? Greet her? Is it not the offense of 10 years? It may not even be a personal offense. Tribal offense. Family offense. Borrowed offense. He offended. He did, she did something against your friend. She did something against your sister. She did something against, against somebody. You carried it. The heart. Beware of that wicked heart. That's a wicked heart. That's a wicked heart. A friend offended you. No more relationship forever. No more forever. You can't lay it aside again. I'm telling you the state of heart that produces those weights that come out from the tongue. Yes. Hateful heart. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Leviticus. Chapter 19, verse 17. Hateful heart. The Bible says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy brother and not suffer sin upon him. You are hating him because you didn't come to him to tell the truth. He really offended, but you didn't tell him the truth. You just boycotted him or boycotted him. You avoid him. Your void heart is because of a hateful heart that you possess. That's what the Bible says. And any weights that will come out on that person will be hateful weights. What did Ahab say of Micaiah? I hate him. Simple. I hate him. So, your heart hates. You hate your husband. You hate, in fact, you, there's a child, your child, you hate that child. Or oh, an adopted child, you hate the child. Your brother's, your husband's brother, you hate him. In fact, there's a friend of your husband, you hate him. For no just a cause. Do you have reasons to give? 
my heart hates. Uh, that's why your mouth cannot speak peace. I am for peace, but they are for war. Oh, Lord divine. These are women that will enter heaven. Clean them now. In Jesus' name. Hateful heart. Again, deceived heart. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 16. Your heart has been deceived. That's why you are saying those things. Deuteronomy. Chapter 11, verse 16. Yes. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. And yet turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. For you to go this far, <laughs> it will require deception. Deceived. Somebody else planned deception for you. Joshua fell victim to this. Yes. When the people who were among them to be destroyed, cleared out of the land, came to Joshua and said, see our feet. Dusty were coming from a far distance. Look at the food that we cooked to come along with us. It has become grown with mockers. Look at our cloth, dirty and dusty, because our journey is many days' journey to come and make peace with you. He examined this thing and didn't pray. Did you pray? Did you ask God about that thing you had? Or you just went into action. Deceived heart. Your heart has been deceived. That is why you are calling evil good. Your heart has been deceived. That is why you are calling good evil. Your heart has been deceived. God brought you to a holy church like this. Already some people have spoken to you to get you out of it. And you are preparing. I will not stay long. I will not stay long. Deceived heart. Deceived heart. It's when you go outside there and coming back becomes impossible. You will mourn for your life. You will say, oh, I was deceived. So, deceived her will speak things. Speak words according to the state of deception they are in. Yet, condition of the heart that makes the tongue speaks. Fearful heart. Genesis. Chapter 20. Genesis. Chapter 20. From verse 1. The Bible tells us. The case of Abraham and Sarah. It was fear that caused it. From verse 1. All through to verse 13. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwell between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gera and Abraham said of Sarah his wife she is my sister and Abimelech king of Gera sent and took Sarah but God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him behold thou art but a date man for the woman which thou hast taken for she is a man's wife. Can you see? 
Restore that man his wife. Verse 8. Therefore, Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told all these things in their ears. And the men were so afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us? And what have I offended thee that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin? Thou hast done deeds unto me that thou that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sowest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. Can you see? That is all. Fear! Because I thought, Man of God, God is with you. You allowed fear to come into you and now you are falsifying records. The program you didn't do, you are writing there that you did it. What caused that? I'm afraid. Let them not say I'm not doing anything here. Can you see? What caused you to lie? Fear, I was afraid. I was afraid. A fearful heart commits sin. A fearful heart. Abraham, the Lord called you that he will be with you. The Lord says, between you and Sarah, even when you talk about Ishmael, the Lord still promised that not Ishmael, there's still going to be a child between you and Sarah. And you are thinking they will kill you for Sarah. This God, do you know him actually? Do you know this God? That you are undermining his words. That the ways of God are not sufficient for you. You would tell lies because you have other ways of defending yourself. You have other ways of keeping yourself. You have other ways of getting advantage apart from God. This fearful heart is what makes the tongue speak lies. It's what makes the tongue to err. I'm telling you so that let's go to the real place and get your life cleansed up. Get your life healed. The real place. Yes, the heart. Deceitful heart. Fearful heart. His son. His son, Isaac did the something. This fearful heart. If you even see how God promised Isaac. The promise God gave Isaac. Look at it in chapter 26 of Genesis from verse 1. Yeah. From verse 1. To verse 11. Yes. It goes. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And, I, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. 
and Isaac dwelt in Gerar. Now, can you see the voice of God, the promise of God to Isaac? Egypt was the center of wealth, of civilization, of power. Let's say it is like a miracle. So, people will always want to go to Egypt if there were, if there were problems, problems around them. They would want to go to Egypt. So because of the starvation, Isaac was already planning to go to Egypt to sojourn there. The Lord said, don't go to Egypt. Stay here. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bring the blessings of Abraham upon you. I'm going to multiply you exceedingly. Yes. What do you learn from here? People think that the best place is America. Every time I'm going to America, or I'm going to uh, UK, I'm going to this. It's not everybody that goes there. It's not everybody that God, it is God's will for them to go there. Where you are, God will deal well with you. Where you are. Sometimes going to those places confuses life. You go to desert because God didn't ask you to go there. It is God that prospers, not a country. It is God that prospers, not a city. It is God that prospers, not, not currency. Find out from God before you take any action. Else you'll go into a desert and live the land of plenty. So, but look at this Isaac. That the Lord shut all presence with him. I am with you. No man shall hurt you. But see it now. In verse 6. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, she is my sister. For he feared to say, she is my wife. Lest, said he, the men of the place shall kill me for Rebekah because she was fear to look upon. <sighs> Come. Where are men suffering because they married beautiful women? They have no rest. Pray that your husband should have rest. Because he's thinking that everybody is looking for you. Who told him? Who told him that everybody is looking for you because you are beautiful? No. And beside. Beauty is the, is the eyes of the beholder. It is God, the woman that feared the Lord, that should be praised. And that woman that feared the Lord, however beautiful she is, people are not looking onto her because of the grace of God that surrounds her. Because of the name of the Lord she bears. Please tell your husband to be peaceful with you. Amen? But then, where are you fearing? After God has said, I am with you. I will keep you. Where are you fearing? Is this fearful heart that leads to compromising actions? Is this fearful heart that leads to fear, sinful ways to defend yourself, to protect yourself? They didn't even come to marry Rebecca. They just say, who is this? Says my wife. Mm -mm. Now, it was Abimelech who discovered it by himself. Yeah. Look at it in verse 8. And it came to pass, when he had been there a long time, that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at the window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Uh -uh. It was, was pressing her breast, pressing this, licking her mouth. Eh? Abimelech was in story building and looked down and saw through the window the man was fumbling with eh? Then Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a shorty she is thy wife. And how seest thou she is my sister? My brethren, you are a pastor. Where should sinners find this fine lies in your mouth? God is with you, my sister. 
Where should sinners, your relations that are sinners, find lies in your mouth to disgrace God? To disgrace the gospel? Why? Your mother is seeing you with a lying tongue. Mother, I want you to come to holiness movement. To come and do what? Learn lies? So, why? Why? If this woman is your wife, why were you telling her? That's what Abimelech said. Huh? How sayest thou? She is my sister. And Isaac said unto him, because I said, lest I die for her. The living God has made promise. Is he a liar? Is God a liar that says he will promote you? Don't, it delays, wait for him. Why are you using lies to get those things? Why are you getting them before the time? Pluck the fruit before the time. Will it be enjoyed? He's a God of time. Why are you using lies to get there? Why are you using lies to marry? Why are you using lies to marry? Why do you falsify, falsify your age? A man asks you, how old are you? You say, I'm 28. When you are 38. If that man comes of God, tell him you are 43, he will still marry you. Because God sent him. Why are you telling this lie? Why do you say you are still a virgin when you are not? It's a disturbing thing for a man to be deceived that you are a virgin and when he marries you, you are not. It, it, the, your test will vanish from him. Liar. Liar. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. You are married already. You cannot say you are married because you still look young and you want somebody better than your husband. Say, are you married? No, I'm not yet married. And you're going to another deal with a man when you have one. Lies. Why? Why are you doing God like this? Women, why are you doing like this? God cannot find a righteous woman. God cannot find a faithful woman. God is working among men to raise up faithful men to marry women. You are not ready for God to give you to them. To form a good ministry for righteousness. Ah. Oh. Why are you doing like this? That's why he brought you here and is here himself to change you. Please go to him. Ask him to change you. Plead with him. I mean plead. Promise him you won't go a liar any longer. You have no weight. That's why many of you, when you say you're going to program, your husband doesn't want to allow it. Why? You, how many times have you gone to program? Have you changed? Have you changed? Have you shown him clearly the program is working in your life? To make him encouraged to sponsor you or allow you. One good tone. Tell me the rest. Have you ever given him a good tone? Oh Lord divine, as they go, let the husbands know that this one is the good turn. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Yeah. That's what God wants you to know. Yes, unbelieving heart. Unbelieving heart. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 6. Unbelieving heart. Hebrews chapter 4. I read verse 6. The Bible says, Seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they, and they to whom it was preached 
entered not, entered not in because of unbelief. The heart doesn't believe. The heart of a Muslim doesn't believe that Jesus is the Lord. No. The heart of an Indian Hindu man doesn't believe that Jesus is the Lord. Your heart is also not believing. That's why you speak what you speak. The prophecies that God gives us in this church, they are real, but not to you. Because you don't believe them. And because you don't believe them, you speak contemptuously on them. Contemptibly on them. You, you despise them. You are not a believer. You are not a believer. You have not believed. You are waiting for information contrary so that you can believe it. Those who don't believe Jesus believe other things. They don't believe Jesus. Those who don't believe the truth believe lies. Your heart is prone to lies, to believe. Not to believe the truth. If you want to believe, search out the truth. Verify it. Go and look for how you will find out whether the thing is true or not. The Berean Christians searched the scriptures daily whether the things are so and they believed if you want to believe. Go and check up. Check up these messages. Check up these prophecies. Check up these revelations. Go and check. Verify. The Lord will convince you more. But you don't do anything about it. You just, I don't believe. These people who have gone away and left holiness movement, do they believe? Or did they believe they never believed? If they had believed, they would have known that this ministry is on top of other ministries. They would have known that truly God is here because he said it. They would have known that God has given the international director the word of life in this world. They would have known it because the Lord has said it many times. But they don't believe. And so they will not enter into rest. They will not enter into heaven. Those words, those words you speak will block you. They will block you. Yes, hardness of heart, a hardened heart. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 7 to 11. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my words for 40, day, 40 years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation and said, they do always err in their heart and they have not known my ways. So, I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take it, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. For, but exhort one another daily, well, it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Come. Some of these women didn't sing in the choir. One person, one of them I was told, according to the form given to them, tell us, when were you born again? I was born again in, uh, in 2014. When were you baptized correctly? I was baptized in 1995. 
and you are in this church and you are a woman leader with all these teachings with writing books you are not reading them we teach your ears are not hearing is it water baptism first or Christianity born again first huh? say it again say let her hear it very well how then does she become born again in 2000 in 2014 and got baptized in 1995 is it in this church with all these teachings and you baptize in i baptize you in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost deep into water once but you were bapt i baptize you in the name of the father water come up yes in the name of the son let's go back go back yes in the name of the holy ghost let's go back, go back. <laughs> how many times does a person die how many times does a person die how many times that did Jesus die? Be identi Baptism is identifying with him in his death and rising up in his resurrection. All these teachings have been going on here. Why are you not hearing them? Why? Why are you not doers of the world? You are hearers only. Deceiving your own selves. Now, many of you here are in the, the same condition. Because you are too big to go back to water. You will not enter heaven for your information. Because water baptism. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. In the equation, A plus B is equal to C. And once B is not there, A cannot be equal to C. That's the equation. He that believeth is A plus and baptized is B before you enter into eternal life. But you say you believe and you're not baptized correctly. Forget, your, forget going to heaven. Forget it. You're not going there. You are not going because man shall not live by bread alone. Tell me the rest. And you're too big to observe the word of God. You're too lazy. Ah, they said, old me now. I will go and be put inside water. Older than you are in hell. Older people than you are in hell. Too big to do righteousness. I'm talking to you. Because how long do we preach the thing? Hard in heart. Hard in heart. Your heart is hardened. Earrings are still in your box. Waiting for when you shall leave holiness movement. For your information, by the time you leave holiness movement, they have changed earrings in the world. Your own that is in the box will be out of place. You hear? It will not fit you. In fact, people will say, ah, where are you coming from? From 19 Abraham. This one, they don't use it again. It has expired. Why? Why did you remove it? Your heart is hardened. But you must appear without earrings to conform. Are these the people that God is taking to heaven that cannot release themselves fully to serve him? That cannot bear it, cannot die to themselves? That's the problem. Yes. That is, come to Jesus for the purification of your heart. Call upon him to save you from your condition. Your dirty tongue has brought various problems to you in the society. Your dirty tongue has brought problems in various forms to you in your family. Your dirty tongue has brought various problems to you in the church. Come and confess your sins that God may forgive you. See him. Meet with God to change your life. Change your heart. Purify your heart. Oh, ye double-minded. 
Purify yourself. Purify your heart. Go to God to purify you. Let God save you from your sin. Let your heart, your tongue change. Let your tongue change. But by the change of your heart. How much emphasis do I give this? I did it yesterday anyway. But I'm still emphasizing. In the book of Isaiah. Chapter 1. Verse 18 to 20. Isaiah chapter 1. Verse 18 to 20. Come now and let us reason together. Say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, rebellious heart, ye shall be devoured with the soul. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Come and settle. Apart from when we are praying oh, 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 for five minutes here. No. Go and find time again. Find time again. Deal with this matter. You know you are the type that Satan comes to carry the words. When we preach it, you are, you are, the, you are the, the seed by the wayside. Don't wait for tomorrow. Handle prayers now immediately. And get the seed buried on the ground before the birds of the air come to pick them from you. Get this thing done. Get your life settled. Get your heart cleansed. Get your life purged. Get your tongue rectified. Correct these things and be a correct woman. A correct person. That is what we're saying. The Lord said, come, I'll do it for you. I'll take it with a stony heart out of your flesh. I'll give you a new heart. And it will inform your, new, it will inform your tongue. You'll have a new tongue. Finally, we'll hear the detail of it tomorrow. But you have spoken many things. Now, you and your sister are not talking. You and your, bro your husband even are not talking. You're not even meeting together as husband and wife. Your weight sunk in and weakened his manhood. So he's not thinking about you anymore. Because the weights were fiery weights indeed. They killed his body. Now you live as men together in a house. He said, my husband doesn't bother about me. From where? Since you killed all by words. No talking together. Go and settle it. Go and recover yourself. Go and show your mercy. Go back to the brethren in the church. And apologize. For those words. Proud words. High sounding Weights of tinkling cymbal because of empty calm. Go and apologize. Humble down before God breaks you down. Humble down and go and apologize. Go and plead for forgiveness. Because your tongue has done damage. And many things are written in the book of record for you to answer. Go and settle it now. Go! Settle it now. In Job. Chapter 42. The, the book of Job. 42, the Bible tells us,
from verse 7. Everybody, let's read verse 7 together. One, two, go. Job 42. And Yeah, and it was so that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eliphaz to Temani, My wrath is kindled against thee. The anger of God is hanging upon you. God says I should tell you that he's angry with you. You have spoiled his church. You have spoiled the family. You have ruined your husband. God said I should announce you that you, you are for hell because of the misuse of your tongue. The tongue is a little member but it is set on the fire of hell. What a great grass, substance, a little fire can burn down. So is the tongue as is little in your mouth, he has done great damage. That the God of heaven is angry with you. You have hindered peace in society. You have told practical lies. Many that left the church is by you. It's by you. You lied against them. You refuse to accept your fault. You'll also go and tell them, I'm angry. Yes. My wrath is kindled against thee and against thy two friends. You were the one that, that formed that company. You, a liar, was forming a company. You went and registered as a trustee. So you are a trustee in a lying industry, a lying company. The Lord said, all you, he's angry with what you, that company is doing. That group of people, group that you formed yourself to be speaking lies, gossip, backbiting, I mean, scattering things. You form yourself as a group. The Lord says, angry with that group. Yeah, you're busting yourself there and say you're righteous. Busting yourself there and say, ah, me, 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 we, ah, we. He said, for ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. My sister, your comfort and comforter is on the way. Amen. You were right, but they overpowered you. You, your position was correct. But these other people's show of knowledge subdued you and wounded you. God will comfort your life. He said, Ye have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. Therefore, take unto you now seven bullocks and seven rams and go to my servant Job, Job and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering and my servant Job shall pray for you for him will I accept let I deal with you after your folly in that ye have not spoken of me the things which is right like my servant Job do, do, did yes you say uh, God Actually, when I noticed that it was not true, I have been fasting before you. He said, fast until you die. You will go to hell. You, because if a man strive for the mastery, he must strive lawfully. If you want freedom, follow the path. Follow the rule. And the rule is you have wounded a man. Although you sinned against God, you apologize to God, but go to that man. 
Let the man be comforted that you have realized your error. Let the man know that your proud being has been humbled, that you have come to humility. It will comfort him. Take a bowl up. Go, go to him. He is the one to pray for you that I will hear. Don't go to another person. Go to him. Don't pray to me. I say you should go to him. As for me and you, go and finish there. Then I know you're serious. So, my sister, people are coming to apologize. Receive them with love. Receive them with happiness. Don't go and toughen yourself to that. <laughs> it's now you know. God, if God will smite you if you do that. You want to discourage them from doing restitution to you? Humble yourself and bless them. Fully, with all your heart, forgive them. Because God wants relationship. This work, we must do it together. The righteous are few. Why should the devil destroy the few righteous we even have? Help, Lord, for the godly woman sees it. Godly women are going away because of the tongue. Apologize to one another. Do it in this conference. Don't be tough to her when she comes to apologize. She's not an angel. She's not an angel. She's a man subject to like passions as others are and has wrongfully done that. And the Lord says she must go and apologize. And she must come. Whoever she is. Except she's not ready for heaven. If she's not ready, leave her as a publican. As a publican. As a hidden man. Let her alone. She's not a believer. Just as you let sin and alone. But if she is a Christian, she will come. Pray that the Lord will make her come. Hello. Say that high in a higher voice so that she can wake up and know that she is expected to come to you and do a resurrection. Hello. I say go back to your sister and do restitution for the bad words you have spoken. The Lord says so. Everybody say, Jesus, thank you. We have heard you. We will do like that. Rise up upon your feet. Go, you, when you go home, go and do, confess everything before your husband. Let time know that this time is this with a difference. Everything, the things he doesn't even know. Confess your sins according to the teaching we have given you here. And let your husband know that you are a new person. Love will, will bubble in that family. Lord, we pray in that family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Worship you, Lord. I give glory to you, Father. Father, we worship. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God has something to say. God has something to say. Listen, listen. Pay good attention. For God has something to say. He has told you. Do restitution. Restitution. 
I'm in your way. Do it quickly. Tell God you will do it quickly. You will not delay. Settle it here. Do it humbly. Don't do it proudly. Humbly. Bring down yourself. He that bring he that humble himself shall be exalted. He that humble himself shall be exalted. You are going to apologize one to another. You are going to apologize to one another. To your relations. If you do it by telephone, do it by phone. And let your discipline yourself and let your tongue learn its lesson. Reject wicked heart. Reject evil heart. Tell God to heal you. Tell God to sanctify you. Tell God to wash you thoroughly with the blood of Jesus. 